this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this completely custom bathroom design in Revit. I'm going to be using the RCCS plugin and I'm just going to be showing you all of the steps, how you create the basic design and then how you apply different types of elements to each of the panels and then how you actually turn that into 3D geometry. And the best part is this is all going to be done in less than 10 minutes. Let's go. Now quickly, before we jump into Revit, if you want to check out this plugin and test it out for yourself, it's available on BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link that up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. With the plugin, you will also get some educational content which I've created so you can easily get started and use it on your own projects. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit, as you can see, I have already set this project up a little bit. So here we just have these three walls for this bathroom. And then if I go to the south elevation here, you can see I've used these uh, detail lines in order to, or just regular lines, in order to present how uh, this bathroom should look. So I've thought about the design and this is usually the first stage. You use lines in order to kind of sketch out what you wanna see. Here I wanna see a mirror, then I want to have these two vertical elements. Here I want to have a couple of drawers above the sink or below the sink. And then here I want to have just some shelving on this uh, wall. Okay, so now when I have set all of this up, I can get started with the RCCS plugin. So I'm just going to go here to the RCCS tab. I'm using the 24 version because I'm using Revit 2024. And you can see these are all of the tools that you get. Now, the first set of tools here is the lines. So you can use those lines to sketch everything out. And then the next step is to create a wall. So this plugin uses curtain walls in order to kind of facilitate this whole design. Uh, you're using curtain walls as your base and then you're building on top of that. And then all of these elements that you create are going to be uh, basically placed in as curtain wall panels. So we first need to place the walls. So for that, let's go into level one, click on wall, and it's going to place four walls. In this case, I don't really need four. So what I'll do is first, I'm just going to move this into position. So for that, let's move this one to this reference plane here, this one to this wall, and then this one aligned to the wall. Now here, I only need the one that's aligned to the wall. So I'm just going to select these two, hit delete, select this one, delete. And then if I go to the 3D view, you can see I just have this one curtain wall. Now let's go back to the south elevation and continue from here. So there I want to adjust the top of the curtain wall to go to the top of the shelving here. And now we can get started with sketching out our kitchen as curtain wall grids. So as I said, uh, it's using curtain wall panels to create the elements, but we have to use the grids in order to separate uh, this uh, curtain wall into individual panels. So in this case, let's get started by clicking on the grid tool. I'm going to use full segment for the first one, and then I'm just going to click here just like that. Then let's do the other vertical one. So that's here. Now, if you're not sure if you're going to be accurate, you can just place a couple of them like this, hit the escape key a couple of times, then go to the align tool, and then you can align those, oops, those curtain grids. You can use the tab key uh, to select individual lines, and then you can align the grids like that. Now, moving forward, let's go back to the grid tool, use the one segment option, and then let's place one here, one here, just like that. We need one here as well. So you just come to an existing one and then you click to place. So we want one here as well. Again, where it's not aligned perfectly, you can use the align tool just like this here as well. And the rest, I think, okay, here I need to align it. There we go, perfect. And then I would just use the same approach for these. So that would be the grid tool, use the one segment option. And now I'm just going to uh, basically segment this out uh, for this side. Okay, and now finally, we need to segment out the mirror. As you can see, this is just one big surface. So what I'll do is I'm going to go here to grid, 
use one segment and then let's place a couple of these vertical segments like this. Hit the escape key a couple of times, go to align and then let's align this grid like that. Perfect. Then for the next step, I'm going to hit the escape key a couple of times, then go again to grid, one segment in here. If I want to try to place one segment, it's not going to allow me to do that. Same thing goes here. The reason for that is if I select this grid line here, you can see it's already going through that position. Same thing goes with this one. So what they can do is they can go to add remove segments and just add a segment here and then hit the escape key a couple of times, select this grid line, add remove segments and add a segment here. Hit the escape key a couple of times and now as you can see we have that mirror kind of laid out perfectly and we now have pretty much everything. So this is now ready to convert into the actual elements. Now if I go back to the south elevation, here I have set up some of the depths here, so you can see this is depth of 500 millimeters, these should be at 400, and let's get started with actually converting this into actual elements. So for that, I'm going to use different elements here. So for example, let's go with a shelf, I'm going to use a single shelf, and then I need to place a uh, value here in the data entry. Now I'm using a zoomed in screen so you can see the whole dialog or the, the, the entire uh, thing but basically here you can just input values so I'm just going to type in here 400 for 400 millimeters and then hit enter it's really important to add the number value and then you just want to click on each of these shelves and now as you can see it's going to be converting that into shelves hit the escape key a couple of times. Now when you select that panel, you can use the tab key to highlight the panel. You can see it has the depth of 400 millimeters and this is a upper single shelf. So you just want to continue this. Uh, of course, at any point you can actually see what you're doing. However, I like to first click or first apply all of the elements here to the actual panels and then I like to go to 3D. You go to 3D by clicking on this button. So I'm just going to continue working here. I want to add this uh, splashback for example. So I'm going to add a splashback which is going to be value of, well, let's go with 10 millimeters and then apply that here, 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 around the mirror of course, here at the bottom as well and then in between all of these shelves, we can add that. Okay, so now we have the vertical elements to complete and the drawers and the mirror. So let's hit the escape key a couple of times, go here and let's see what else do we have here. So uh, let's actually now switch to some additional shelves. So I'm just going to add this single one. This one will be 500 millimeters. So let's go with 500 and then click here and here and then also for these two. And then finally for the drawers, hit the escape key a couple of times, let's find drawers, one handle like this. The drawers I want to be a little bit less deep, so 480, hit enter, and then let's apply those two here. Hit the escape key a couple of times. And finally for the mirror, I'm just going to go here to uh, these additional elements. Let's go with the frameless mirror and add the thickness of 10 millimeters and then click here and now we have that mirror. Hit the escape key a couple of times and now let's let the magic happen and I'm just going to be turning this into 3D. Now here you can see we have this AI option and if you're creating a kitchen or some cabinetry or a shelf system and so on, you can use AI. Here I think this is simple enough, so I did everything manually, however for some kitchens and so on it might make more sense to just go with AI at first and let the AI, let the machine decide what it's going to look like and then you can customize it later. In this case we did it all ourselves, so let's click here on 2D, 3D mode to convert this into actual 3D geometry. And this is the end result. Pretty cool, right? I think this was really quick and we get something that looks really good. And obviously this is something that we would, it would take tons of time to do this as model in place or something like that. So this is a really quick way of creating something like this. Now, of course, you can add additional elements. So for example, here I can go and I can add a sink. So let's go with a square 
basin, for example. And then I can add that here if I want, something like that. Perhaps move it a bit closer to the mirror. Yeah, I think this makes more sense. Perhaps in the south elevation, yeah, I can center it here. But yeah, that seems to look fine. So you can add a sink. You have multiple options here. So for example, yeah, you can see we have uh, the uh, under basin, for example. So if you're not happy with this one, you can just select it, delete it, and add a different one. So for example, this one would perhaps look a little bit better here. Yeah, definitely. Just need to position it properly. So let's go into a level one and then we can move it a bit quicker. Yeah, so this is starting to look a little bit better. And then of course we can uh, cut the element below by using a cut geometry tool. So I'm just going to cut this drawer panel like that with the wash basin. There we go, looks much better now. And yeah, I think this looks really cool. Uh, now, of course, you can modify it even further. So if you're not happy with the handles on these drawers, you can go here and find the handles and then find the ones that you like. For example, I really like these bar four. And then I can just come in here and I can click on the existing ones and it's going to convert it uh, to that. Obviously, you can input the value of how wide you want those to be and you can play around like that. But there we go. We have a really cool, let's switch this to realistic, a really cool bathroom uh, design uh, done in a really short time. So again, if you want to check this out, it's available on my website under plugins. And also if you want to get access to this Revit project file, as well as all of my other Revit project files, you can find that on my Patreon page, which I'm going to link up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.